Hello, I am Alon Burstein, visiting assistant professor in the Department of Political Science and Israel Institute fellow with the University of California, Irvine, here bringing you the summary of the last 24 hours of the Israel-Hamas war. It is currently to be eve of December 1st, 2023 in the United States, the morning of December 2nd, 2023 in the Middle East. Starting with the hostage situation, the truce between the sides has broken down. There was no more hostage exchanges in the last 24 hours. The IDF summary, as of now, is that 137 hostages remain in captivity in the Gaza Strip. These include two minors. These are the children of the Bibas family, 10-month-old baby, and his four-year-old brother. According to Hamas, they have been killed in Israeli bombings. Israel, however, has not confirmed this. And 15 women. In the truce in the last week, 105 hostages were released from captivity in the Gaza Strip, and 240 Palestinian prisoners were released from Israeli jails. Amidst those who were released from the Gaza Strip, there were 80 Israeli women and children who were released as part of the deal, 24 foreign citizens who were released by Hamas unconditionally, and one Israeli Russian citizen that was released by Hamas as a gesture to Russia. In addition, prior to the truce, five people were released from captivity in the Gaza Strip. These include a female soldier that was released in an IDF operation, and four older women that Hamas had released as humanitarian gestures in the first weeks of the war, and the bodies of three hostages were recovered. In addition, it was reported in Israel today that six Israelis that had either been missing since October 7th or were presumed kidnapped are now confirmed dead. It is unclear at this point if they are included in the count of 137 that the IDF had stated or not. Regarding the possibilities of a future deal, the family members of those held in hostage in the Gaza Strip today expressed great anger in Israel and disappointment at the government that it has decided to return to fire. In addition, despite the collapse of the truce, negotiations are continuing. Qatar is trying to mediate these negotiations, and Israel announced that as before, if Hamas were to transfer a list of 10 women to be released, it could still buy itself another day of truce. The Wall Street Journal today reported that Hamas is claiming that it is negotiating with other groups in the Gaza Strip who are holding four women captive. Amidst this, Israel's finance minister and the head of religious Zionism, Bezalel Smotrich, today called upon Prime Minister Netanyahu to belay the offer that Hamas can transfer the list of 10 names and buy itself another day of truce. He stated that Israel should announce that the agreement is over and is severing ties with all negotiators, adding that the IDF cannot function if it is beholden to when Hamas decides the operation will stop. The Wall Street Journal today also reported that Hamas is paying explicit attention to the hostages with U.S. citizenship and that the group recognizes that they are valuable for future pressure on Israel to allow different pauses or humanitarian aid or all kinds of pressure valves from the United States onto Israel. Moving on to the ongoing fighting in the Gaza Strip, fire today was resumed in full force. There was barrages of rockets and, uh, rockets and mortars that were fired from the Gaza Strip. These pummeled the southern parts of Israel, places in Sderot, southern Gaza, near Am, Ashdod, that was directed in Ashkelon, Sufan, Etivot, and directed in Mithlasim. There were also rockets sent towards the Lachish area, Gan Yavne, Chatzor, and also to Gush Etzion in Tkoa, and the Shvera and Gush Dan, in Yavne, Rishon Etzion, Rehovot, Beit, Han Beit Hanan, Gezer, Givatayim, and Tel Aviv. Regarding the actual fighting in the Gaza Strip, I want to clarify something since the IDF has been holding its lines in north of the Gaza Strip, but it's important to clarify that while the IDF has taken over the north, the southern parts of the Gaza Strip still includes 70% of the entire Gaza Strip that the IDF has not taken over, and even in the north there are still three specific Hamas strongholds that the IDF has not taken over, which are the areas of Jabalia, Sajaia, and Tufah. According to different reports, the IDF is going to begin by concentrating on these areas before turning down south. The IDF announced today that it is planning to resume its ground offensive in the coming days. Meanwhile, today there was substantial bombardment from the air, sea, and artillery bombarding. There was reports that over 200 bombings were carried out in the past 24 hours. The reports are that the bombings concentrated specifically on the areas of Jabalia, Sajaia, Zaitun, Beit Hanun, and also down south in the Khan Yunus and Rafah towns. There was also intensive gun battles reported in the Sheikh Radwan area in Gaza City. Turning down south, the IDF has dropped leaflets in eastern neighborhoods of Khan Yunus, specifically El Karara, Nkhuza'a, Abasa'an, and Bani Sohela, calling upon people to evacuate these places immediately towards the town of Rafah. The leaflet stated, I'm quoting, You are to evacuate immediately to the safe zones in Rafah. The city of Khan Yunus is a dangerous war zone. You've been warned. After these leaflets were dropped, scores of civilians were seen evacuating the Bani Sohela area and presumably these other neighborhoods as well. Regarding the IDF's activity down south, amidst the pressure that I reported in the last couple of days from the United States on the IDF to avoid mass uprooting of Palestinians again down south like was seen up north, and in general to minimize the ca civilian casualties to the extent possible, the IDF today pu published maps in leaflets that it dropped and an online interactive map in which it divides the southern parts of the Gaza Strip into the respective neighborhoods and territories, specifically much smaller regions and zones. Some of these, some of these are 
the exact neighborhood. Some of these are half neighborhoods. The entire southern parts of the Gaza Strip is divided into well over 300 to 400 different areas. The IDF has given each of these areas a number and a code and called upon civilians to learn their neighborhoods and codes and to remain informed with the IDF announcements and the interactive website that the IDF has published in Arabic regarding which areas they need to evacuate. The aim of the IDF is to avoid a mass uprooting of Palestinians and instead to be able to announce to Palestinians you need to evacuate this neighborhood at this day versus this neighborhood in this day. Regarding casualties, it reported five IDF soldiers were injured to varying degrees in mortar fire attack in the area surrounding the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian Health Ministry reported that since this truce broke down in the last 24 hours, 178 Palestinians have been killed and 589 were injured. Moving on to the humanitarian situation, there was no aid trucks that entered the Gaza Strip in the last 24 hours since the escalations began, no aid trucks were permitted to enter. The Saudi Al Hadith network quoted Egyptian sources saying that Rafah crossing remains open and that they hope that trucks will be able to flow in soon. The U.S. National Security Council today stated that Israel has agreed to allow some trucks in, but that their numbers will be minuscule compared to what it was during the truce. So prior to the truce, Israel had come to agreements that it was allowing 20 trucks of food, water, and humanitarian aid, such as medicines and medical supplies, to flow into the Gaza Strip. And days before the truce, Israel had come to an agreement with UNRWA, the UN Work and Relief Agency, to allow two trucks of fuel in a day in order to allow UNRWA to operate its hospitals and sanitation plants and all kinds of other facilities. Presumably, that is what the U U.S. National Security Council is referring to. However, there's no details about what will be allowed to enter or not. Moving on to the West Bank, there were two incidents of settler violence they reported against Palestinians, one in the Asawiya area near Nablus where settlers attacked and torched a business, and the other in, a, in the Bedouin vid, village Kabana near Mitzpahir Hosel settlement where also property was vandalized. Amidst this, the United States administration today informed Israel that it is going to deny entry to the United States of settlers involved in West Bank violence against Palestinians, and the announcement specifically said that the U.S. is disappointed that Israel is not taking harsher measures against settler terrorism against Palestinians and that the U.S. is starting to operate these personalized sanctions that will take effect in the coming weeks. A total of 15 Palestinians were arrested in the last 24 hours in the West Bank. There were substantial, substantial weapons caches exposed by the IDF in the Kfar Arab areas near Jenin, where there was substantial IDF activity, and according, reportedly there were a lot of confrontations and several Palestinians were injured. Moving on to the north, as the truce broke down in the Gaza Strip, fire was re-engaged in the north as well. Mortars and rockets were launched from southern Lebanon towards IDF outposts in Rosh Nikra and in Margaliot. There were also rockets launched towards Kiryat Shmona. Hezbollah claimed responsibility for rockets towards the Dishon town in the Upper Galilee and for three other border instances, including shooting attacks against the IDF. The IDF retaliated against a wide variety of targets of Hezbollah throughout Lebanon using planes, helicopters, and artillery. In addition, the IDF reported that it attacked several attack units of Hezbollah that were on the fence between Israel and Lebanon, specifically near the Malachia area and near the Zarit area. Hezbollah's El Manar network reported that in IDF retaliations in the town of Hula in southern Lebanon, a mother and son were killed. This is unconfirmed anywhere else. Other reports also stated that there was suspicious activity in the skies in the Upper Galilee and that a suspicious target was intercepted by the IDF. There's no information on what that was. And finally, in the last several hours, Syria is reporting about an Israeli missile attack in the area south of Damascus, in the Asida Zinev area, and in the Hajira area. Presumably, these are against different either weapons transfers or Iranian activity. That is what these attacks have been in the past. There is no report as of now. Moving on to some of the regional developments today, after there was an explosion yesterday in Sana'a, the capital of Yemen, and the Houthis specifically put out an announcement in Arabic and in Hebrew stating that this was a local explosion as a result of a gas station and nothing to do with any attack, the Saudi Al Hadith network today reported, quoting Israeli sources, stating that Israel carried out the attack in Sana'a and that they were targeting specific weapons warehouses and all kinds of drone warehouses of the Houthis. Amidst this, the Houthi spokesperson today, Yahya Saria, stated that the Houthis are also poised to return to their military activity against Israeli targets. Similar announcements were put out today by Hezbollah Iraq, this is an Iranian militia in Iraq, not the Hezbollah that's in Lebanon, but also a militia that's loyal to Iran. And they stated that in support of Gaza, they are prepared to escalate their military operations in Iraq and elsewhere. And I'm quoting, if the American enemy insists on continuing the Zionist war machine in Gaza and southern Lebanon, we are prepared to strike back. Moving on to some of the political and general trends that occurred in the last 24 hours, there was a big climate conference today in Dubai in which several meetings were had, held on the side. Reportedly, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken met with 
foreign ministers of many Arab states and discuss the future of the Gaza Strip. The, those meetings included the foreign ministers of Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Jordan, Bahrain, and the representatives of the Palestinian Authority. And in addition, Israeli President Herzog met with the Qatari Amir Al Thani, and the two were seen discussing many different things for a long time and then shook hands in front of the cameras. This is the first such meeting that happened between an Israeli delegate and a Qatari delegate. In other political news, Minister Gantz today spoke to Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez following the diplomatic breakdown between the two countries after Sanchez stated that the death count in the Gaza Strip suggests that Israel is not adhering to international humanitarian law, and Minister Gantz tried to explain to him how Israel is trying to adhere to international humanitarian law. And the Jordanian Parliament today stated that it is re-examining the economic deals with Israel surrounding natural gas following the return to fire in the Gaza Strip. Other news, Israel revoked the permit of UN humanitarian coordinator to the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. She has been in this position for three years. Israel has continuously said that she is biased and not giving accurate reports. Her permits to be in the territories have now been revoked. In other news, the Wall Street Journal today reported that the Israeli Mossad has devised operational plans to assassinate the entire leadership of Hamas throughout the world, and that the plans have been put on hold in order to not disrupt negotiation efforts for now, but that they will be carried out after the war is over. The list cited in the Wall Street Journal includes Yahya Sinwar and Mohammed Def who are in the Gaza Strip, as well as Ismail Aniya, the leader of Hamas in Qatar, and Khalid Mashal, Salah al and Marwan Issa. These are all the top leaderships of Hamas. The report also stated that the Mossad is very dismayed with a press conference given by Prime Minister Netanyahu and Defense Minister Gallon several weeks ago in which they made these plans public and said that they had ordered the Mossad to begin operational plans to carry these assassinations. According to the Wall Street Journal, officials in the Mossad were very dismayed and did not understand the strategic logic of giving the Mossad this order but then announcing it publicly. Moving on to speculations regarding the future of the Gaza Strip, Reuters today reported that Israel has informed several Arab countries, including Saudi Arabia, of a plan to create a security buffer zone between the Gaza Strip and Israel within the Gaza Strip after the war. Reportedly, this was met with widespread rejection. The report also suggested that Israel has been floating this idea in the United States, and the United States has also rejected it. Responding to this, Ophira Falk, who is Prime Minister Netanyahu's foreign affairs advisor, told Reuters that the plan is more elaborate than that and involves three stages after the war, including including destroying Hamas, demilitarizing the Strip, and de-radicalizing the Strip, and that this idea of a buffer zone may be part of the second phase, i.e. the phase of demilitarizing the Strip. The U.S. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby was asked about this report specifically, and he stated, and I'm quoting, you cannot take away from the territory of the Gaza Strip, it is Palestinian. That is my report for the last 24 hours. The truce has now officially broken down. There are reports that there's ongoing negotiations and that Israel has stated to Hamas if they transfer over a list of 10 Israeli women, they can buy themselves another day of truce. Right now, the fire is re-engaged in full force. I'll be back tomorrow.